Hello, welcome. This is Alvaro Berrocal. Uh, I would like today to introduce uh, what I consider is one of the main issues that are uh, influent to our contemporary societies. Uh, this is the problem on how uh, our traditional decision-taking system, the one we uh, got from the Greeks and from the uh, Christian tradition, has been slightly substituted, especially from uh, the modern times, for a new one that is, uh, I think, for uh, in, in all effects, uh, less and less uh, productive and a worse way to take decisions. I'm trying to point to the problem that in the last years, uh, this was initiated, as I said, with modernity, but uh, it has been uh, highly developed with uh, the evolution of mass media. We have seen how the emotion has taken, have taken the uh, role of reason in the decision-taking system uh, of humanity, especially in the youth. Uh, uh, just as a brief off topic, I would like to say that uh, I'm going to try and keep this discussion uh, as non-technical as possible, but for those of you that are more interested in the theories that uh, rely behind this, this topic and this discussion, I would like to say that my explanation was, is going to be loosely based in the traditional Aristotelian uh, point of view. Okay, so. Let's go for it. Let's uh, try to clarify what I consider uh, the problem of a, a emotionalization of our decision-taking system. We find that uh, the main references of our generations or the last generations is the ones that we find in the mass media. Uh, in, those, in those fields, when we find that a character needs to take a decision, uh, we find that he's always advised with sentences or with statements similar to mm, follow your heart, uh, do what you think is the right thing inside of you, and that kind of thing. Okay, what I like to what I like us to, to think about is that this kind of statements are actually a, a emotionalization of the decision taking system. Okay, the first thing I would like to point is that when we take decisions uh, there are different uh, parts of us that are involved okay I, I i'm going to simplify it i know that this can be explained in a more difficult way but just to simplify we could say that there are three main uh, three main uh, ingredients in our decision taking system that uh, we could say that they are reason I'm not going to write them, just, this is just to have a, a visual reference. Reason plus will, and from that addition, reason plus will, what we get is freedom. Okay, so uh, this is, has been more or less very, very simplified, the traditional, the traditional way in which we take this uh, the, uh, decision. Sorry. Uh, so uh, the role of reason, I think it's quite clear, the role of reason is uh, uh, interlegere, no, you know the word, the English word intelligence. For example, uh, intelligence is grounded on the Latin word interlegere, uh, intelligentia, interlegere. That means to read into, to read into what, to read into reality. Okay. So the main role of reason in our decision-taking systems is. Uh, analyzing what is in front of us uh, to provide the data that are necessary to take a decision. Uh, uh, animals do not need that uh, reasonal system. Okay, they get the data just processed by the uh, or they get the stimuli uh, just processed by their instincts. Okay, but uh, we also have instincts, but we add something to that instincts. Uh, it's like a label we add to that uh, instinct, instinctive uh, instinctive system, which is reason. And reason is always about making interpretations about reality. So getting aware, interlegere, okay? Uh, obviously, it's not enough with knowing what is going on. We need to orient our will to that thing, okay? We need to give our annuance to what we analyzed. And from that addition is when we get freedom, okay? If you think about 
when statesmen when statements like the previous uh, I used as an example okay one needs to take a decision and the only advice he gets from a friend for example is follow your heart if you think about follow your heart is mostly uh, eliminating reason from this equation uh, and uh, I always like to say to my students that prob probably I don't have a receipt uh, or, or I don't have a way that guarantees that a decision is a good decision but I know what makes decisions uh, bad decisions and eliminating reason uh, from the equation is always one of these ways okay uh, the thing is that uh, in parallel with these three characteristics reason will in freedom we find uh, uh, which we can say that these characteristics uh, are immaterial they belong what we uh, to what we call mind or what we call spirit or what we call or whatever okay uh, but we are not just uh, spirits we are not just minds floating away here and there uh, we are bodied realities okay uh, in a further discussion I would like to discuss uh, also the the implications of this statement because I used as you can notice the expression uh, that we are bodied realities uh, uh, trying to avoid uh, specifically the statement that we have a body because uh, okay I think that we don't have a body that we are bodied realities but I'll keep that for a for a different discussion a discussion between uh, dualism and helimorphism that is uh, absolutely interesting but I don't want to get into to not to follow the the path of this discussion okay okay but so we need to assume that there are two um, ways in which we exist we exist in a minded way in a, in a spiritual way uh, but we are also bodied okay so we have much reality we are material uh, to some source and that implies that uh, in our decision-taking system is not only present the immateriality but also the materiality and uh, it's interesting or I would like to say that ma that materiality expresses in another uh, in another uh, three characteristics that inter uh, are, uh, are related directly with the characteristics of this pharaoh uh, which are emotions feelings and passions okay uh, be careful I'm not using here the addition or the equals sign because here they are not so interactive among them but they absolutely interact with the a characteristic we find in the upper part okay today I'm not going to get into passions which is also a very interesting uh, topic but today I'm going to center in these first two characteristics of the equation okay so emotions and feelings so we said that we use reason to decide uh, to decide sorry not to decide to understand what is going on in reality to interlegere uh, realitas uh, to know what is going on and we use our will to uh, embrace to uh, uh, agree uh, with the interpretation we made about reality okay this is the interesting thing okay according to that we have also emotions and feelings uh, I like to say that a lot of our problems and our uh, uh, more ho most horrible situations uh, are grounded in the fact that we mix these two things emotions and feelings and that is the reason I want to characterize them and uh, I would like to characterize them uh, one of the emotions and feelings that are more more important for human beings which are uh, uh, love yeah, which is a feeling uh, and okay in English we say to fall in love uh, to have a crush with or uh, whatever other thing uh, we will just fall in love okay fall in love as different from love 
okay we are going to use these two as an examples of emotions and feelings and I think it will be clear that when we mix them it's quite it's quite dangerous okay okay what is the main characteristic uh, with or which are the main characteristics of emotions okay emotions are in the first place a biochemical reaction to a change in the environment okay that could be the mm, informal definition uh, philosophical definition I don't I'm not interested in the biological definition we are trying to give a, a philosophical approach to this but the, the, the philosophical definition of what an emotion is uh, could be that emotions are the uh, biochemical reactions to a change in the environment uh, what is the meaning of that uh, we uh, the, our body perceives a change in the reality uh, that uh, is uh, uh, it's uh, relevant I don't want to get into into the concept of relevance in this field uh, it perceives a change in reality that is relevant and it generates some uh, biological and chemical steps to react to those to that change in reality okay uh, so that could be the definition uh, uh, a biochemical reaction to a change in the environment and uh, we can also add a, a few uh, corollaries to this characteristic the most important corollary is that if it's a biochemical reaction then it's not voluntary okay so an emotion is not something that falls uh, under the power of my will uh, to use a very vain example we could say for example feeling terror when uh, we hear a very big noise or when something gets into the room uh, suddenly we feel terror but that terror is not something that we control is something that we f uh, that we uh, uh, suffer uh, involuntarily okay so the first corollary is that they are absolutely involuntary okay the second corollary is that if they are a biochemical change in our body then is a, a something that is an altered state of conscience and if it's an altered state of conscience that we could compare with a, a, a situation in, in which a person consumed a drug or, a, a, or whatever other huh, thing that changes the way we perceive reality then it's not only the fact that in it never falls under the power of my will but that changes the way I perceive reality because it's an altered state of mind for example when I mean terror I perceive reality differently than when I'm not okay and third corollary which is probably the most uh, interesting and important is that as is a biochemical reaction needs to finish so it's limited it's necessarily limit, limited in time it needs to be, have an end just to say because the body is not designed to keep those altered states of conscience okay so let's uh, think about uh, a little bit about uh, okay before we go into the example we'll say a few words about no we'll, we'll, sorry we'll move to the example we said I'm going to use the uh, fall in love state uh, as an example of this okay what is falling in love falling in love is a reaction to a change in the environment okay for example a, a person that we consider attractive gets into our in, into, in, in our environment okay and suddenly a, a lot of changes a, a biochemical changes happens in us okay for example our adrenaline our serotonin and our cortisol are uh, uh, change the, the their proportion in our blood torrent okay uh, this is a biological reaction that obviously has to do with the process of reproduction okay the nature want us to be ready for reproduction but as, as we said this um, uh, this uh, uh, state of mind uh, is not voluntary okay we just fall in love and that's all okay uh, is something that just happens to us it's not under under the power of our will okay and what is even more important when we fall in love our reason is 
uh, modificate it I don't want to use a negative uh, shade on this because it's just a natural process a natural process cannot be uh, inherently negative uh, most uh, I would like to say that it's even more probable the opposite that natural processes are inherently positive so what I would like to say is that when we fall in love there are changes in our uh, blood torrent that modificate the way we perceive reality that is the reason that when we fall in love we perceive only the positive uh, the positive characteristics of the other one and we are um, almost unable to perceive the bad characteristics of the other one even when they are pointed by people that surround us eh? it's always the case eh? I, I use it as a joke but it's always the same that uh, when when uh, someone introduces uh, the person that he fell in love with to the friends okay and when that person leaves he asks okay what do you think about uh, this person and they sometimes they don't understand what uh, the person saw in that in that other person and they can only answer okay the important thing is that you like her or that you like him okay because it's inherently not irrational because we are uh, incapable of or irrational of pure ir irrationality from my point of view this is discussable obviously but uh, I think it's not irrational but it's an, a situation in which our analysis of reality or the ability of analyzing reality is deeply modified uh, remember that I used as a comparison the use of drugs or uh, an altered state of conscience when we are in an altered state of conscience our perception of reality is absolutely altered the same happens when we fall in love okay and then the last of the if you remember the last of the corollaries uh, remember we said it's not voluntary this is the first color corollary uh, the second one the second one affects uh, reason okay and the third one is that is limited in time okay uh, it's interesting because uh, most of our emotions uh, are limited in time and they last for very short for example uh, the it is calculated this is obviously an average and can be different absolutely it the there is these uh, uh, studies that uh, show that the average of length of a state of terror in a person is about 15 minutes minutes okay so one sees the danger the unknown danger that is the trigger of terror an unknown danger uh, we perceive the unknown danger and uh, we are in that state of terror that uh, get us ready to fight or fly uh, and we are in that state of mind for about 15 minutes and it's curious because when this uh, state of mind finishes after those 15 minutes more or less in average as I said uh, what we feel is the opposite so we were ready to fight or fly but when this ends will feel absolutely tired this is because uh, uh, some of the opposite hormones of the uh, of the triggering hormones of that state of mind uh, are released in our blood torrent okay uh, so it's like a reward just to say uh, for uh, being able to survive which is something that is most of cases desirable okay so uh, what happens that I was saying that uh, falling in love is very curious because it's probably the longest or the most lasting emotion in human beings uh, if I said that the average in in uh, terror is 15 minutes the average in uh, the falling in love situation uh, sorry it's easier for example in my language in Spanish we have enamoramiento and love I know that in other languages it's the same eh? enamorare, amare um, and other languages but in English we have this expression falling in love and the other expression that is loving okay bah, it doesn't matter so I think it's it's clear okay uh, uh, this falling in love state of mind lasts this for 24 months in average which is quite long yeah uh, it's probably one of the longest emotional states of mind uh, of human being well this ha this has a anthropological 
explanations that uh, we can discuss in in further in further uh, discussions if you want or that you maybe can email me and I can uh, I don't know I can make a short video explaining uh, why it is so long but it has uh, 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 an anthropological explanation that is very interesting but uh, I don't want to stop uh, because I want to finish with this okay but look 24 months uh, I have been teaching for a long time in high schools and university and uh, every time a student uh, approached me and asked me for advice about his personal life etc especially in everything that had to do with uh, relationships uh, he said things that uh, being repeated uh, they get used uh, they get sorry they get uh, 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 as common places for me at least okay they say things like oh I have been dating this girl for two years uh, and now I don't feel the same I don't feel the same okay uh, probably because you are not supposed to feel the same probably because this initial state that is the falling in love state uh, is finishing so it's you're not supposed to feel to feel the same okay so uh, and uh, look what happened with terror I said that when terror finishes we feel almost the opposite and sometimes we when the falling in love situation finishes we feel the opposite we feel a deep um, strange sensation that make us to I don't know feel uncomfortable with that person and that is because just just because this biochemical situation has finished or changed okay uh, we don't want to be uh, to go too deep in the biological explanation okay but uh, that is not everything okay because we are not merely emotional animals I said that we are also animals with feelings and feelings look if emotions interact with reality uh, but emotions are controllable with will so we can control our emotions uh, so we can uh, try to uh, control them and fight them or whatever or order them I like to say that we can order our emotions through will okay not through reason because we are not very able to use reason when we are in a very emotional state and the opposite happens we can rule feelings with reason okay because what uh, feelings interact with is with will okay so we can give order to our feelings with reason and that is actually the way we give uh, we give uh, order to our feelings because feelings as I said is something that is absolutely different from emotions feelings are privative of human beings so animals are emotionals animals have similar emotions to us the more complex the animal is more similar they are but animals do not have uh, feelings because feelings imply the order of reason okay so if I said that uh, emotions are a biochemical reaction to a change in the environment we could say that feelings uh, is a psychological construction to integrate uh, a part of our life so to make livable a part of our life okay so if you think about they are not biochemical but they are uh, psychological and if they are psychological they imply the use of reason okay so this has also a, a few corollaries okay if we said that emotions uh, are uh, or interact with reasons feelings interact with will uh, and if we said that emotions are naturally limited in time feelings are not necessarily limited in time well, let's apply our example to this to try and make it uh, understandable okay so falling in love is a, a biochemical uh, a state of mind okay or change in our blood uh, uh, torrent etc but loving is something different loving has to do with psychological states of mind so projects of the future conceptions of reality okay uh, similar uh, approaches to the to life or uh, sharing of transcendence uh, or this kind of things okay so uh, psychological constructions are always about past present and future so uh, 
if, if we fall in love irrationally, we don't love irrationally, okay? We fall in love just because our chemistry works that way. But we love because we share something with, with the person we love, okay? And that is absolutely uh, more powerful, okay? So, uh, look how nature, or how God made us so well, that we have the longest e emotional state that is falling in love, that give us the time, 24 months, in which you feel that pulsion of, of, of this first mm, situation, uh, give us the time to construct that kind of psychological situations. So, for example, uh, uh, future plans or uh, transcendental, uh, transcendental decisions, etc. So, a project of life. Okay. So, when, uh, when, our, when my students asked me or about the situation and said, oh, I don't feel the same. Uh, as I said, I used to say, well, you're not supposed to feel the same. You are supposed to, or you should be supposed to spend that, that, that time, that emotional time, to know the other person uh, and to get something bigger with that person that uh, allows the construction of a love, okay? Because uh, uh, that situation uh, is what is going to make possible the feeling. And feelings are not irrational, as I said. Uh, when someone loves another person, he can see the defects of that person. He can, he's not in an altered state of mind. Uh, when someone loves another person, I always like to think in the, in the tender love of the elderly that spend their whole life together. The grandma and the grandpa are absolutely aware of the defects of the other. Okay, so reason works perfectly. But they, knowing their defects, their will, uh, it's adapted to them, okay? So, uh, okay, uh, uh, maybe uh, grandma knows that all the defects of grandpa, but she still loves him, okay? That is the, the power of, of feelings, okay? So that is uh, more or less the most important thing. Uh, if you think about, when we introduce that emotionalization of our societies, what we are, it is destroying all this, uh, all this part of the equation and we are just letting us in the same situation that animals are so merely uh, deciding on what our biochemical pulsions drive to decide and I think that is uh, something that is very problematic uh, not only because it, that conduct us to take bad decision but the, because this make us very easy to uh, manipulate because if we are merely emotional uh, the manipulation to acquire goods or to change uh, opinions or whatever is going to be merely emotional so it's it's only going to need a change of my biochemical state of mind to change my mind okay uh, so uh, this is one of the most important uh, situations I uh, or the most important problems I find in the especially in the youth okay uh, if you liked uh, or you have any question or you would like to to ask or criticize or whatever you want to 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 say about this brief uh, about this free brief introduction to this subject uh, I am free I am open sorry to answer whatever uh, you want to ask me so uh, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed uh, this fast explanation about emotions and feelings thank you very much